That kind of freaks me out a little bit. <gasps> oh, 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 yeah, cool. Check this out. Look at like that. And yes, I do have a rock hammer in my bag. I just I'm not getting it out. Oh, whoa. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I am standing in Camp Verde today, and I am headed to Flagstaff to look for fossils. But on this detour, I am on Salt Mine Road. And I am going to go look over there for selenite and gypsum pseudomorph crystals. Fingers crossed that we find some really good specimens. But thank you so much for joining me on this adventure and let's go see what we find. I'm headed from Phoenix to Flagstaff. I am going to pick up my best friend and do a couple detours along the way. The reason I was in Phoenix is because I was at an Arizona filmmakers event where I got to dress up and be all pretty, but now I get to get back in the dirt. All right, here we go. Let's go check it out. We are headed that direction. Whoop, my phone is trying to fall out of my pocket. That was scary. I was shocked to find out that the Camp Verde salt mine is one of the oldest known mines in the United States. Some experts note that it was likely worked for as long as 2,000 years ago. Rare artifacts have shown that the mine was worked for salt before the arrival of Columbus in the 14th and 15th century. I did hear some like popping over here, like people might have been shooting. So, uh, just I'll keep my eyes peeled, let people know that I'm coming. <laughs> Uh, there's no vehicles allowed out here. There was a sign back there that said no vehicles, but I can walk. So, oh, oh, that looks like some wood over there. That's always a good sign. You can tell that this hasn't been like traveled a lot. Now it said, oh, this is like a footpath. This is great that up higher in those hills over there are where we're going to find some of the good stuff. But like I said, I am traveling up to Flagstaff, so yeah, I can't spend a ton of time here, but I do have plenty of time before I pick up one of my very best friends. So get out in the bath. They're checking it out. There's some basalt rock on the ground. A lot of white stuff. It's rained recently out here. So, looks like there's some footprints. Yuck, this stuff gets kind of soft and squishy. That's disgusting. <laughs> Ew. Okay, so it's very clayy. Let's see. I guess we'll just... Yuck. Keep head Yuck. heading up this direction. I don't want to sink into like stuff and fall and die. Maybe I can get to the grass. I don't know where to go. <laughs> okay. We will be right back. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so we made it through that. This is an awesome area. Very, very cool. A lot of batches of concrete. Hopefully we find what we're looking for. Let's go up to the white stuff. I've never been out here before. So, this is always a fun adventure when I get to go do something, go somewhere I've never been. 
And this was on a whim. I was like, what can I do on the way to Flagstaff? Because I don't even know if the place that I will be going to that I'll actually be able to find fossils at. Now, areas like this, they're all, yuck, like, squishy. Um, they're all evaporites. So that's essentially what we're looking for. Oh, oh wow, it's crunchy. You get all these little white crystals everywhere. But they're actually kind of interesting. I don't know if oh there is any possibility of taking any of this home without it just completely falling apart. It's so clay. Coming out after the rain might not have been the best idea. Honestly, a little bit leery because I don't want to be shot at. Oh, wow. That's cool. Check that out. That is an awesome, awesome little crystal. That's gypsum. I'm pretty sure it's a big old gypsum crystal. Just laying right here on the top. Ooh, that's amazing. They're like little gemstones. And they're like all over the place. Wow. <gasps> oh, that's a big one. Bigger, I guess. Ooh. And we've got like these sheet looking ones too. They're pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, that one kind of fell apart. <laughs> They're just glistening everywhere. It is warm out here. Like it is super humid today. I want to find another one. Like the actual rose shape, like that's what we're after. And if we don't find it, I mean, so be it, but these are pretty cool. And I'm collecting a fair amount of them, I guess, just because I want to see how much water they can withstand before they start to fall apart. Oh yeah, look at this guy. That one, yeah. A long time ago when I was in field camp, I found some of these gypsum roses. Um, stuff kind of like this. Oh, this one's a good one. Um, near Pyramid Lake, where I was doing a little portion of field camp. And some of those I still have, of course, that I absolutely love. I will have to insert some pictures so you guys can see how big some of those are and how neat they looked, but none of them were clear. They all had inclusions of whatever sand and minerals were around them, so they were always, always had something in them. Oh, oh, look at this. See that? Look at this. I hope. I can get that back one piece. It looks pretty sturdy, but you never know. Well, I bet if you get up and out over there, whew, I bet there's a bunch of them over there. We don't have that kind of time today, which is fine. But if you guys are ever here, you can come out here and find these too. Or you want to just stop by. This is an awesome, easy trip. Kids, adults, rock hounds, Whoever wants to do that. Mm -hmm. 
some of those, the sparkliness on them is really pretty. Mm. Whew. It is warm though. How cute is that? <gasps> what? What? Look! Look at this! Oh, whoa! Wow! Oh man, this little wash area might be like the place to be. Uh oh, we don't want to go crazy. Okay. Oh man, oh man though guys oh my gosh this is so cool it's amazing that these are just laying on the ground we've got just so much going on here I love the peach colored ones no oh, oh and I stepped over this <laughs> what oh my gosh and this one I'm loving this. Going back to the history, when this mine was investigated, there was a mummified body of a Native American miner that was found in an underground working in the most recent mining period in the 20th century. The establishment of Fort Verde in 1971 brought new attention to this salt deposit, and some of it was used for human consumption, but the majority of it yeah. was used for stock salt. Look at those layers. Layers. <laughs> wow, they are everywhere, guys. In the 1920s, the mine was operated as an open pit, and the ore was used in processing paper pulp. In the 30s, it turned to an underground operation, where there were 14 tunnels in horizontal strata, and it employed 75 men, half of which were Apache Indians. And the mine produced 100 tons of salt cake daily, making it the most productive in the country. The success of the mine was short-lived. With pure German ore entering the market in 1933, it forced the closure of this mine. Attempts were made in the 1960s to market the deposit, but since the demands of a 99% purity couldn't be met, and there are larger, purer deposits in the United States, the mine has been dormant ever since. One last note. If you're staring at this white hill area over here, you're gonna want to go to the back side over there to look for things. All of this gets quite squishy. And so far walking back to the car, I haven't been seeing any of the same crystals like we saw over there. We have so much going on here right now. These are all of the rocks that I have to prep from my last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different rock hound stops. Yeah, it's a lot. Anyways, right now we're gonna be focusing on the selenite, these guys right here, to show you what it looks like when we wash them off and clean them up. This is what we're looking at from what we found out and about. Now, hopefully we can clean off some of these without them completely falling apart. We're gonna see. But, oh, oh, that one already fell apart. <laughs> Some of them though I might not touch and I might just try to get off the dirt because I don't want to hurt them. And it's very, very susceptible to water since it is an evaporite. So, let's check it out. Let's also grab a lot of samples so that I could see exactly, or so I could show you guys exactly what happens, oops, um, when you get them wet, what, what they look like and if they start to deteriorate. Keep back some of these that are really awesome and already kind of clear. And then we'll wash off some of the others. Okay. So this is kind of what it's looking like if you just brush the dust off, right? And I'm hoping though that by squirting it off, it'll be better. These are the ones that I'm more concerned about, like falling apart. Let me see. Whoa. That's much prettier. It's way better. I'm gonna do the worst thing ever. And I'm gonna just put a bunch of them, well, all of the ones that I'm not like really, really attached to. And I'm gonna put them all out here and we're just gonna see what happens when, when I squirt them off. 
Oh, that one. It got really shiny. These might be a lot tougher than I thought they were. Usually you wouldn't do this at all. Hmm. Alright, well I'm gonna clean off the rest of these and I'll show you guys my favorites. I'm gonna let them dry out just for a little bit because you won't really be able to see the full effect of cleaning them until they're more dry. Here are the selenite crystals cleaned up, guys. They turned out really well for being kind of dirty and being blasted with water so heavily. They didn't fall apart, thank goodness, because I was fully expecting some of them to burst. Some of them did come in, uh, fall apart in like pieces, like they, little bits of them fell apart because the clay that gets in between uh, weathers them apart. And so when you get the clay wet, of course, there's nothing to bond the two things together. So they just kind of fall apart. But this is a good rose. This is the best rose I found out of the bunch. So that, you know, that kind of gives you a description or, or I guess a, a good representation of what you're looking for. This was just a really cool piece. It's super clear. You can see the clarity on this one. It's really, really good quality selenite. You've got the little bladed pieces that have been etched. Real flat side, but still you get beautiful etching on it. It's just influxes of fluids that create the etching. And then this guy is really cool. It's a good rose, but it's kind of kind of ruddy on parts of it, just meaning that you've got all of this excessive drusiness and it pulled in some extra minerals from the clay that were that make it kind of crappy looking, but it's still cool looking. I mean, peach color to this, making it a kind of a peachy colored selenite rose is awesome. And then you get this really white one, but it's got all these unique blades going every such direction, which is cool. So that's kind of it for the selenite crystals. I think that, you know, overall, I like the result. They turned out pretty cool. There's a bunch more. There's a big old handful that I had that I didn't, you know, show you guys every single piece because that would just take forever. But, oh, oh, okay, one last one, one last one. Look at the etching on this. So you have all of those different layers and they all stayed together. This one's starting to be a rose a cool one though, it's because it's kind of pyramidal. All right guys, this was the salt mine area. So our next stop is hopefully going to be finding fossils up near Flagstaff, but I hope you enjoyed looking for the gypsum crystals here. So let's get going and see what we find. Next week on Ellie Knows Rocks, part two of my Flagstaff trip adventure. I love a good detour. There's, there's a mosquito that is so trying to attack me on every level. But <laughs> Join me next week for all the excitement. <laughs>